Hey guys, Andrew here from Aloha Quills, and today we are finally going to build the new quail condo. So this is another four foot cage, it's two tiers. Um, this is for my grow outs before they go into the big quail condo for egg production. Um, this is basically where the quails will spend the first two to three months of their life. Um, we just finished this up now, we just finished making the video on how we built this. Let me show you some of the uh, features that we've got with this and how it's an improvement over the original quail condo. Okay, so we have an empty top tier and we have quails in the bottom tier. So these guys are about six weeks old. Um, they're almost fully, completely sort of adult feathered out. On the outside, we have some rabbit waterers and on the inside, we have a J feeder. They are temporary. I will be doing a video on how to install a proper feeder and waterer system in here. So we're gonna have outside the cage feeders like my J feeders over here and internal waterers like the system that I have on this one. We have swing outdoors. This makes it easy to open and get access to your quails inside. We changed the wire out. So we're now moving over to plastic coated wiring. Um, we have spoken to a bunch of different people. Originally we weren't using that. We didn't see the benefits of it, um, but this is really supposed to help with foot problems and we've been getting some of those. This cage is built in sections. So you have a back panel, you have a side panel, you have these front panels with the doors, and then you frame it all in. Um, it's super, super easy to put together. If I had to take this apart and move it, it would be super, super easy as well. We have the same pans that we use in the big one. These are my last two, so now I'm using all six of the ones that I bought. Supposedly Walmart discontinued these, but you can order them online um, as well as some auto parts stores carry them. So that's the new quail condo right there. Um, very, very easy to put together. And here's how I build it. Okay, so I have all of my wood pieces cut already. Uh, I'll put a cut list down below. The two types of wood that we're going to be using is going to be two by twos. That's going to build most of the framework and then two by ones that is going to make up the front panel with the doors and it's also going to make up the area where the quails stand we're also using two types of wire um, one is coded one is uncoded so this is a 36 inch roll of half inch by half inch hardware cloth and then the plastic coated one again that's going to be what the quail stands on that's 24 inches wide and it's again half by half and then over here we have the tools that we're going to use um, you could buy the wood cut to length already most places will cut it for free if not you would need a handsaw or a chop saw but on top of that you're going to need a drill you're going to need a tape measure you're going to need some screws in my case i am using one and three quarters screws and two and a half inch screws you're gonna need some latches for your doors some hinges from your doors a pair of wire cutters or wire snips you're gonna need a staple gun and the corresponding staplers and you're going to need drill bits for putting your screws in i like to use these star bit screws um, you get more grip more torque less chance of stripping a screw so that's just the tools that we need so the first thing we're going to do after this is we're going to go ahead and put together the frames for the sides uh, this is going to be a really easy build it's all going to be built in sections okay to build the legs we're going to build this twice so two sets one for the left and one for the right you're going to take your 70 inch pieces and two of the 23 inch pieces so two legs and two cross beams and we're going to screw those together um, real real simple these self-tapping screws make it real real easy and all you're gonna do is just screw in your first one just like so and then you're just gonna repeat it on the other side if you wanted to glue these joints, you can go ahead and do that. I don't feel the need. It means that if for whatever reason I have to take one of these apart, 
it's easy enough to do. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure 34 inches down this way and we're gonna put in our other leg, uh, our other cross brace, sorry. So from the base of this one, we're gonna measure 34 inches. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna screw this side in as well. There we go. So that's one side of the legs done. We're gonna go ahead and do this a second time so we have two identical pieces. So once you've got ahead and got that together, that should give you your two sets of legs. So this is gonna give you your left and your right legs. Just put these to one side for now, and then we're gonna go ahead and frame out the back section. Okay, so your back section is very, very similar to building the legs. You're gonna get your 48 inch pieces and your 34 inch pieces. The 34 inch piece is gonna go inside of the 48 inch piece. So this is gonna be the top, this is gonna be the bottom, and this is the side. It goes in between the top and the bottom. And it's the same thing, you're just gonna go ahead and screw that together to build yourself a square. Once you've got ahead and you've screwed it together, you should end up with something that looks like this. So it's 48 inches across, and it has the 34 inch pieces on the inside. So once you've gone ahead and you've got your two sides and your back piece done, we're gonna go ahead and frame in the doors. Uh, this is the part that you'll put mesh on and you'll have a door to open to get into your quails, whether you're getting birds in or out or whether you're just collecting eggs. Same principle, we're gonna go ahead and frame that out. There is an extra step in this because we have to make sure we put the doorway in there. Using the 48 inch pieces of one by two and the eight inch pieces, you're gonna do the same thing that we did for the back piece, which is just go ahead and build a frame. And then after we've done that, we're gonna add in two middle pieces to frame our door. Once you've gone ahead and you've got your frame built, you're gonna go ahead and you wanna mark your door positioning. So our door is gonna be eight inches wide, which means that we need to center this in our door panel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our tape measure and we're gonna measure out 20 inches and we're gonna put a mark and then we're gonna measure 28 inches and put a mark and we're gonna do that on the top and the bottom of the door. And then what you're gonna do with these pieces is you're gonna line them up so they are on the outside. So this direction on this side of the mark, and then this one is gonna be on this side of the mark. That'll give you an eight inch by eight inch doorway. And then our door, which is a little bit smaller, will fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just screw these into place. Okay, so there you go, there is one front panel built. We're gonna go ahead and build another one of these. So we're gonna have two layers, so we need two of these. Okay, that should give you two pieces that look like this. These are 48 inches long with the eight inch pieces in between to build our doors. Uh, and these are gonna be the front of our two layers of the quail cage. So the next step is to go on and frame out the area that your quails are gonna stand on. Um, very, very similar to what we've been doing. Again, it's using the two by ones, and we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and screw together your two quail holding trays. Um, you know, it's real simple. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and you've screwed these together, your next step's gonna be to start applying your wire. So I'm gonna start off with my plastic coated wire, and that's gonna go on these frames and this is what the quails are going to stand on. To hold the wire onto the frames we're going to use a staple gun. You want a good quality staple gun and you want the staples that match it. Um, you know there's a lot of different sizes 
for the staple guns, you want to make sure that you get the longest staples that your staple gun will sink completely into this wood. If it doesn't sink completely in, that doesn't really matter as much because you can just tap them in with a hammer. But if you get the right size staples and the right staple gun, um, it'll save you a lot of work. Okay, attaching the wire to the frame is really simple. All you're gonna do is just lay it down at one end and you're gonna apply staples into it along this edge. Once you've done that first edge, you want to roll your frame, your wire down the frame, and you want to make sure to keep your wire nice and tight. And then whilst keeping it tight, you're going to go ahead and start stapling along the edges. You want to make sure to put staples about every three inches, and that'll give you the most support. Try to keep your wire going as straight as possible for the whole length of the frame. When you get to the opposite end, any excess wire you have needs to be cut off. Make sure you cut this wire off before you staple the last row so that you have a nice edge to fold on so that you can cut as close as you can possibly can so that you don't have excess wire overhanging. So to do that, all you're gonna do is take your wire cutters, find the row that you want to cut, and just snip all the way along. Okay, so once you've stapled the opposite end, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for your other frame. Um, again, these are gonna be for the quails to walk on. So the quail is gonna walk up on here. This plastic coated wire will protect their feet, stop them getting scratched or cut and uh, help reduce problems that they may have going on. Okay, so for the legs, we made this measurement real, real easy. What we did was we made the distance from here to here big enough for the wire to fit. So when you staple it on, you're gonna staple it on just like you have the other wires and it actually matches up exactly the right length. So this will just staple straight on and then you've only got one edge to cut and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do that for both sets of legs. Okay, so this is what your legs should look like. Your wire is stapled at the top and at the bottom and it goes across the full length. So your coverage is good and you've just cut along the edge. So you're gonna do this for both sides. Um, it doesn't matter what side of the wire you put it on. Um, when we put it together, this is gonna be on the inside on either side. Um, they're exactly the same. So this would be either this side and you, you turn it around, it would be the other side. The next step is to go ahead and we're gonna do that back part. So this was made with the wire again in mind, so the wire will fit exactly from the top to the bottom. You won't have to cut the length. You'll only have to cut one side over on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna staple that now and get this piece done. For the front of our cages, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we're gonna staple on. This one is obviously gonna take a bit more cutting because we're only filling this space from here to here. We're gonna leave this open and then go from here to here. You can use whatever scrap pieces of wire that you have. I have some extra pieces um, of the plastic coated. So for one of them, I'm gonna use that. And the reason I'm gonna use that is the roll is five foot long. Um, so it gave me an extra foot of wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple that on one and then we'll just staple the regular half inch mesh on the other one. Um, you know, use whatever you have. This is a great time to be using the off cuts of wire that you might have. So this is how the front panel should look. It has wire in this area here 
wire in this area here and no wire here. I did go ahead and use that plastic coated wire on this one. The other one, as I said, is I've just used a regular wire. Um, your door is going to go in here. This is going to be the front panel. This is where your, uh, you're going to be able to see your quails through this area here. I'm going to have some extra pieces of wood left over. That's just going to be used for assembly and to make up the poop tray. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of our pieces together and we're gonna start assembling this. It's real, real simple. I do recommend, um, you know, if it's going inside or it's in a tight area that you assemble it where you're gonna put it together. Um, you know, if you have a couple of extra feet around it for clearance for moving around, that'll be great. And if you have a friend to help you, um, this is the time to ask them because if you try and do this on your own, you can do it. But if you have somebody help you, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. Okay, the first parts that you want to assemble is going to be the sides and the back. So to do this, if you have help, it's going to make it easier. If you don't, you're going to want to go ahead and lay your back down. And you want to make sure that the wire is on the inside. So in this case, if you're laying it down, it's going to be facing up. And then you're going to want to take one of your sides and also make sure that this wire is facing in. And really, really simple, what you're going to do is you're going to want to drive your screws into this to make the leg. And just a, a quick tip, as you can see, if you preset your screws, you don't have to do it when it's standing on its side. Okay, so now you've got one leg attached to the back and you just want to go ahead and do the other side, again, making sure that the wire is facing in. Okay, so once you've got your back in and your two legs, it should give you this U-shape. And what you want to do is go get one of your support beams, one of the extra pieces of wood, and it's going to go from here to here. This is going to give you a little bit more support when you're working on this. And this is essentially your cage design, um, the basics of it, you're just building a cubular cage on legs. Okay, so your next step is to go ahead and attach your first door panel, and that's going to be real, real simple. Again, the wire's going to go on the inside, and what you're going to do is you're just going to butt this in. This is also going to go on the inside of the wire, so it's actually going to hold your wire in on the front as well. Um, and all you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and screw that in. Okay, so once you've got your first door panel installed, the next step is to go ahead and insert the floor. The floor has to go in, first attached to the front, and then you do the back. So if you measure from the top of your cage to the bottom of your door, it's 11 inches. That means that the back of your cage is gonna be nine inches from the top. So what you're gonna do is measure from here to here, and it should be nine inches. That's where it's going to go. That's going to give you a two inch drop from the back to the front. That's so that your eggs roll to the front. So with that two inch factored in, your rollout tray should sit almost exactly flush with your door. Nice thing about doing this on the wire is you can use the wire for measurement to make sure it's straight. So once you've found the piece of wire on this side, you can just follow it across and it will put you you know, in a straight line so you don't have to worry about measuring as much. 
Um, but do go, go ahead and double check because once you put this in place, it's kind of finalized. And you want to get it in just enough to hold it in place um, until you get the back one in and then you can go ahead and tighten everything up. Okay, so your next step is going to be to put in your first poop tray um, holder and that's going to be 19 and a half inches from the very top of the cage. So just measure 19 and a half down, make a mark the other side as well, 19 and a half. And then go ahead and just attach that first one. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach one more at the bottom. Again, uh, these half inch squares act as a nice measuring tape for us. So all we have to do is go ahead and follow the one that is in line with the front one. And just do that on both sides. And this is what your poop tray is gonna sit on. So you want to go ahead and you want to add your cross beams. They should be 21 and a half inches approximately. Um, mine are just a little too big, so I've got to trim them down. And you want to put them in about one foot in. And that'll support the poop tray um, so that it doesn't bend or it doesn't warp. Your next step after this is to go ahead and insert your other front panel. So exactly the same thing as last time. All you're going to do is put this in place. And screw it in. So real, real simple. So once your other door panel is in, you want to go ahead and put in your next um, floor level. Okay, the easiest way to measure for this front panel is to butt your top part up, then come down to the side and measure from the bottom of the poop tray, and you, it needs to be seven inches. And you want to do that on both sides, make sure it's straight, and that will give you the correct um, roll down from the front to back. Again, it's going to be about that two inches of drop. And then you're going to go ahead and just screw the, the floor tray in place. Okay, so if you followed along with my design here, um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to mount your next poop tray seven inches below this front part. So that actually works out two inches below this sidebar. So all you're going to do is measure two inches and then add a line two inches on the bottom one, same on the other side, and then this poop tray bar is going to go across like this. Okay, and then this is where you're going to add in those longer cross pieces. So these are going to be one foot in from both sides. Okay guys, so as you can see, the cage is pretty much finished. Um, you have a couple of choices with your poop tray area here in the middle. You can leave it open and use the poop tray um, as the flooring to stop the quails from in here coming up. Or you can staple a piece of wire in there, or you can put a piece of board in there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide a piece of board in there for mine so it makes a floor. Again, from the top, you have a couple of choices. You can climb up here and staple a piece of wire on top. Um, if this is gonna be in a garage or it's gonna be in a barn or an enclosed area and you don't need a roof, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take a piece of wood and put it on mine. Um, this is gonna go outside, so I'm just gonna take a piece of one by one, uh, put it up on top, 
and that will just give me just enough angle for the rain to run off and what I'll do is I'll take a just a plastic shower curtain um, they cost a couple of bucks and I'll just put that over the top and what that will also do is give me the plastic that I can hang down the front so if we have a storm come in it allows me to sort of close off the quail area um, and keep any sort of big rain out of the quail cage. We're going to go ahead and do these doors now. The reason I didn't cut the wood earlier and show you that is because when you put this together, um, it might not go together completely square. So the hole is uh, just exactly eight by eight. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of plywood that's seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters, and that'll fit in here. And then I have a lock and I have a hinge for each one. The lock we're going to mount at the top so that it always goes down into that down position. Um, it doesn't accidentally fall open. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these pieces now, we'll get that in there, then we'll get this sorted out and put in place in there, show you what it looks like with some uh, quails inside. Okay guys, so that's how we built the new quail condo, uh, thanks for watching, if you have any comments or ideas on how to improve this, go ahead and uh, throw those in the comments below, and as always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, we're doing a lot more quail videos, we've got some rabbit stuff going on, and of course uh, Mel's garden is going a little crazy, uh, it's coming up on summer here in Hawaii, so thanks for watching again guys, um, have a good day.